Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be our second video looking at these guys. These are the mealworms that we set up last time. And today we're going to be looking at what you need to do to grow them and maintain them so that they grow into healthy adults. So hopefully you remember last time when we set them up, we put them into muesli rather than wheat bran, which is what you see a lot more frequently. It contains things like sort of raisins and bits and pieces of nuts and things like that. That's absolutely fine. The mealworms will eat through all of that. To be honest, one of the really easy things about them is that they will eat practically anything. If it's a vegetable matter, they will have a pretty good go at eating it. The only thing that you need to provide them with is a source of moisture. As long as they're in edible bedding, they don't need to be fed as such. They just need to have something where they can get a water supply from. And that water supply can come from quite a variety of sources. I mean, the easiest thing by far is to just provide them with bits and pieces of carrot or potato, anything like that. You don't need to spread it out much, they'll move to go and find their own food. But any sort of vegetable matter that you want to give them is suitable. The only thing you need to be aware of is obviously mealworms themselves don't have a smell, but anything you put in there might. So I, I wouldn't give them garlic or onion or anything like that. It won't bother them, but it might bother you if they start to smell, but sort of anything sort of salady related. I give them bits and pieces of any salads that I've had. They can have that. They basically become like a bin, basically, for all of your sort of vegetable bits and pieces that you've chopped off and then not used. Just stick it in there with them and they'll munch their way through it. And it's much better than putting that sort of thing in the bin. So you might be wondering why we're going to the expense of giving them such a varied diet. And here we are, by the power of pre-recording, this is now five weeks later. And you can see that all of the muesli has gone, they've eaten their way through all of that. All the nuts have gone, all the raisins have gone, in fact they were pretty much the first things that they ate through. There's just a few bits and pieces of apple in here that's left over from when I've given them something else as a water source. And it's now that that need for a balanced diet becomes really obvious. It can be really tempting when you go to the pet store, or, or wherever it is you're going to be buying a mealworms from. If you see a tub that's got pupa already in there, you might be thinking, oh, you know, I can cut down on the amount of time it's going to take for them to become adults and to start breeding and all of that sort of malarkey. But what I tend to find is that because they've been grown purely to become the grub stage and then to be fed onto something else, they don't have the nutrient value that they need in order to pupate properly. You'll find that even if they look good at the time in the tub, they'll die eventually, just like these ones have. And so these are some of the sort of earlier hatching and evolving ones that I've sort of saved. And you can see that even this little guy here, he looks okay, but he's got a split down his carapace. He hasn't grown properly. He hasn't had enough nutrient in his body in order for him to build that carapace properly in order to survive. Now, to me, there's no point in breeding him. He's, he, he, he's not going to survive for very long, sadly. Um, so and there are other ones in here as well. I'm not too sure how well you can see this little fella here. He's died now, but he's been born literally with no carapace. It hasn't grown at all. He hasn't survived and he's been half cannibalized by the others, to be honest. He's sort of fairly eaten now. And it's the reason why you want to get them when they're young so that you can grow them on to be healthy, to become decent adults that you can then breed. So if you then have a look at these guys, these are the healthy ones. You can see that the pupa are nice and plump. They're going to hatch into decent adults. The adults themselves are stronger. They've got all of their sort of parts, they've got their legs, they've got the carapace, they've got everything that they need. Some of them are a little bit paler, that's fine, they're just a bit younger, they darken up to the black ones uh, after usually sort of four or five days. But the early ones, the ones that pupate early because they weren't healthy won't survive, whereas the ones that you've grown on will be much much better. And that's why we go to the extreme, the sort of lengths of giving them the better food and making sure that they've got an environment that they can live in. Ultimately, the healthier they are, the more eggs they're going to lay, the more mealworms you're going to have to be able to feed onto your pets. It kind of makes sense. And the cycle is that now that I've got these guys, this is what, there's probably about a hundred in there maybe, of a combination of decent healthy adults and healthy pupa who should by all means become healthy adults themselves. These will now be my breeding stock basically. Everything else that was in the tub, that's chicken feed. They're going to be, uh, yeah, eaten before they can go any further. These ones, what I'll do is I'll just pop them into a fresh tub by themselves, give it 12 weeks, and I'll have a tub that is bursting with new mealworms to feed on, and then the cycle just starts again. Uh, I'll pick out 100 or so healthy ones out of that, put them into a fresh tub. Everybody else that's left, sorry, chicken feed. But, so yeah, that's sort of like the stage that we're at on how you maintain them. You just need to 
give them good food, give them a source of water that doesn't need to be actually water, pick out the healthy ones, breed them on, and just keep on repeating the cycle. There's no reason why you should ever really run out of mealworms. So if we just go back to our tub of what is now designated chicken feed, you'll notice, if I just sort of move a few of them to the side, hopefully you can see down at the bottom there's this sort of grainy, sandy material. That's basically mealworm poo, is what it is. It's, it's the remains of the muesli after it's gone through a mealworm. And that is actually a really good plant food, so it's well worth saving it. The best thing to do when it comes to sort of separating it out is to literally sieve them. And for that, you're just going to need a really old sieve. I quite like these old metal ones. This one is pretty knackered now. It's not going to get used for anything else. Well, I certainly wouldn't after I've put mealworms through it. But if you just pop that over a bowl, and if you literally just pour everybody on top, And then just shake them through. Ooh, be careful. I don't like to try and shake them around too much. I'm sure it's not very pleasant for them, but I do find this by far the quickest method. And then you've just got a sieve that is full of mealworms. Nice and easy. They can go back in the tub. They're not going to be with us for much longer anyway now. And you can see you're left with all of this lovely, what's known as frass down at the bottom. As I say, keep that, store it up in the summer, use it on plants, they really, really like it. Use it for house plants as well, it seems to be a great food for them. But yeah, that's it, that's all you need to do for growing and maintaining your mealworms. So here are the adults in their fresh new tub, ready to get to breeding and getting me some new mealworms. And in the next video, we'll be having a look at feeding them to your pets and to wild animals. What kind of process you need to go through to do that. So I'll see you later, and I'll hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye now!